it's finally time to start fitting melody along with chords. And even though this is a very, very powerful concept, it's also very simple. So the way we'll approach this today, uh, we'll start with setting up a basic chord progression, choose a really simple rhythm, and then we'll start looking at how to choose notes in the melody that fit along with those chords. So as far as our chord progression, we'll keep it as simple as we can. We'll be in the key of C major, and we'll do a one, two progression. That means we're playing a C chord, then a D chord. And that's it. We'll just go back and forth between those two chords. Um, as far as rhythm, uh, without getting into the details of how rhythm works, we'll just do this one, two, three pattern, which is what I just played. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we'll take each chord and play through that pattern four times. And that's it. And when we start choosing melody notes to fit along with this, we'll just play that note along with the, the first note in this pattern. So we'll, we'll be picking a note and then playing it like this. One, 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 each chord. There's a bug. Okay. So that's our basic setup. Uh, now we just need to look at how to choose notes in the melody that fit with the chords. And on the most basic level, it breaks down into two categories. We can choose what's called a chord tone or a non-chord tone. So we'll start with the chord tones because that's a, a, a good bit simpler. But it's kind of self-explanatory. If you play a chord tone along with a chord, that means you're playing one of the notes that are already in the chord. For example, if I'm playing a C chord and I choose to play a chord tone, I could play the note E, that actually belongs to the chord. I could play a G or a C. And those notes will fit very, very well, obviously, because they're already in the chord. So there's no dissonance or tension there. They're very comfortable, very, they, they blend perfectly. And with only that, if that's all you could do, you can actually do a lot of really cool melodies with, with just that one concept. So for example, let's say I'm playing the C chord. Um, I could choose to play an E. I'll fit with it, that's a chord tone. Then when I move into the D chord, I'll shift into playing an F, because that F is one of the chord tones in my D chord. So here's that. All I'm doing is just matching chord tones to each chord. And, and that's just sticking with one chord tone each, but I could start to, to move into different chord tones for each chord. So say for the C chord, play an E, I can move to a G, when I switch to this one I could play an F, and then a D, or an A, and I'll start moving in and out of the different chord tones in each chord. So here's what that would sound like. I move to the G this time. Uh, that's just sticking in this octave, but I could move up here and uh, play those same notes in a higher octave. I could really play them anywhere I wanted to on the keys. So I could start out here. Move between the octaves. And do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, that's really the whole idea of chord tones. You're just picking a note in the melody that already belongs to the chord. So the non-chord tones is just a note that does not already belong to the chord. And this is a little bit more involved, but it's still not too bad. Um, I'm going to be choosing a note other than these three. Now I can't just choose any note I want to. I'm going to stick with notes that belong to my key, in this case C major. So if you remember, C major has these seven notes in it. Um, I chose C major because it's all white notes, so it's easy to remember in this case. But if we were in a different key, like in the key of D major, we'd be choosing one of these seven. So if I'm playing my C chord, uh, I could play these three. These are chord tones. But if I wanted to play non-chord tones, I'd be choosing from one of these four. These notes belong to my key, but they don't belong to the chord. So when I play one of these notes, they, they don't mesh in quite the same way. They have a little bit of kind of tenseness to them. They sort of pull on the harmony a little bit. For example, this note D. 
if I play this along with a chord, I get this, this kind of more, it sounds a lot different, it, it kind of has that, that pull on the harmony. A little bit of tension to it. And what I could do, actually a really common thing to do, is use one of these non-chord tones to develop a little bit of tension, and then move that into a chord tone, kind of resolve it, and you get this sort of tension resolution sound. A lot like that 1-5-1 one, one progression did, but in that case, it was based around the, the chords themselves. So here's what that would sound like. I'm just using that D to generate a little bit of tenseness. And moving it into an E. I wouldn't have to move it into an E, but that's a, a nice musical gesture. So if you look at the C chord for a second, um, you already know the chord tones. Here's the non-chord tones. I just played a D, you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, I could also play an A, and that'll do pretty much the same thing, or create the same kind of feel. Um, it doesn't belong to the chord, it still works nicely, but it does generate a little bit of tension. I could use that to resolve into the G, I could jump up to the C. Same idea. Um, this one though, th these other two that we have left, we just talked about these three chord tones, these two non-chord tones, um, this F and this B. Um, to be specific, this F is, uh, we call it the fourth. Um, in this case, we're looking at a C chord, so we call this note number one, this is note number two, this, or sorry, this is note number one, this is note number three, this is note number five, right? Root, third, fifth, if you remember the intervals. Um, if we start looking at the F, we're talking about the fourth. Now again, it doesn't actually belong to the chord, but we're looking at it in terms of how it relates to these three notes, so we call it the fourth. We were playing as D, we were playing the second. Hopefully you can see that. So this, this fourth is a note we want to be very careful with. Um, this D, it has a bit of tenseness to it, but it sounds very good. We can use that to our advantage, but this F, a lot of times this doesn't sound that great. Now, this can depend on where you are in the key. Um, so if I was playing chord number five in the key, I may not have this problem, but um, chord, or actually I would have the problem. If I was playing chord number four, I wouldn't have this problem. But if I'm playing chord number one, and I try to do this fourth, this note is right next to the third of the chord, and it creates this kind of harsh sound. So, in general, I avoid playing that note, or at least if I do play it, I move past it very quickly. I don't really want to hear that note harmonizing with the chord. It works great for the D, or the A, but that F, that sounds not very good. So, in general, I'll avoid playing that note. Um, there are other things you can do. You can actually alter the note and play a, play a different note instead, um, a note that's outside the key, but there's a lot that goes along with that, so we'll save that for a later lesson. So for now, um, this fourth here, kind of avoid. So the only one we have left is uh, this note here, uh, the seventh. And this one's kind of interesting because it's certainly not a chord tone. It doesn't belong to the chord I'm playing. But if you think about a seventh chord, for example, C major 7th. Um, as soon as I turn that chord into a 7th chord, I'm actually including this note, this 7th. Um, and so, if I was just playing a C chord and I played this note, it could start to make this chord feel like a 7th chord. So in some ways, it can kind of belong to the chord if you, if you approached it that way. But then again, um, it is, it is actually the leading tone of the key. It's right below that C, so you could use it in a way that kind of resolves into the root note. So you, you can get a little bit of tension from it. So it kind of depends on how you approach that note um, to, that'll determine what kind of sound it gets. But to, to sum it up, this note could kind of go either way. It could in some ways belong to the chord and sort of treat it like a chord tone. But in other cases, maybe it doesn't. It really just depends on how you use it. So we'll leave the chord progression alone for a second. Let's say I just play the C chord. Um, I could start by playing one of the chord tones, move to a non-chord tone, resolve it back. I can generate that tension that way. Same with this one. I can use that, that seven, the note number seven, as a tension note is kind of a chord tone. And I'm 
getting outside of a rhythm there, but um, the idea is the same. I can kind of take this note and use it either way. So that's essentially your choices here. If you're playing along with a C chord, you can choose one of the chord tones, one of these three. You can choose a non-chord tone, which is essentially these three. And this one is one that you could use, but you want to be very, very careful with. Um, it does not harmonize with the chord well. Now, if I switch to my D chord, um, my chord tones become these three notes. Um, I'm still choosing from the notes in this key. I still have these seven notes to choose from. But in this case, everything's kind of changed now. Um, this C is no longer a chord tone like it was with the C chord. Now it's a non-chord tone. Um, same with uh, this D. You would refer to this as the second of this chord. Now we're kind of uh, changing our focus to the D chord. So now we were, we're going to call this note the, the root or the one. This is the three. This is the five. And this becomes our two. This becomes our four, etc. cetera. Uh, now in this case, since we're playing a minor chord, we don't have that issue with note number four clashing with the, with the third. So in this case, it's not right next to it. It's actually a whole step away. So you can play the fourth and it works just like a, a normal non-chord. It generates a little bit of tension. Um, as far as the others, we uh, you know, that covers the three chord tones. Uh, these two work as non-chord tones, the two and the four. Um, same with the six, that one works just fine. And for the seventh, um, in this case, it's not a half step lower than our root note, like it was with the C chord. Like in this case, that B was right underneath the C, so it had a pretty strong pull into that C. But in this case, we don't really have that happening. This, this C is not just a half step below our D, or the root of our chord. So we don't get quite as strong of that, that tension resolve sound. So this one works more like a chord tone. Um, since if we turn this into a seventh chord, it would be this note. So a lot of times playing that, that seven along with this chord, it kind of just extends our harmony a little bit. Okay, so I think that's enough enough of that for now. So what we're left with, we have our chord progression moving from C to D. I can start by playing notes that, that fit along with the C chord. I can either choose a chord tone or a non-chord tone, which would be these three. Um, when I move into the D chord, my chord tones become these three, or I can choose one of these four as a non-chord tone. Although remember, this last one um, can kind of work as a chord tone too. Just depends on how you use it. So. Here's an example of playing a melody in that progression. I'll start the same way I did before. Here's the E and the F, and then I'll start to move around a little bit. Just chord tone so far. using the melody or the rhythm a little bit but same idea um, and uh, I think uh, I think I'll leave it at that for now so uh, next lesson we'll spend a lot more time looking at some of the nuances of this but this is the essential concept you can you can play a chord tone a chord a, a note that belongs to the chord or you can play a non chord tone um, as long as it stays within the key you can use one of those but you do have to be a little bit conscious of how it's going to interact with that chord and in general when you're writing a melody you tend to play those two off of each other the chord tones have this sense of resolve and this sense of sort of comfort and the non chord tones have a little bit of tension to them and you kind of use those two and move back and forth uh, so that's it for today. Uh, leave me any questions or comments you have, and I will uh, try to address them in the next lesson when we'll spend a little bit more time with this and probably get into some more complex chord progressions. So thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.